guys. Hope you're well. Hope you've had a good day so far. Um, so I'm just going to really give my thoughts on the Derby County game um, from last night. And also just do a bit of a re uh, preview for Preston North End on Saturday. First of all, I just want to send my thoughts and um, condolences out to the family of Geoffrey Rowe. That unfortunately passed away during the second half of uh, yesterday's game against Derby at Oakwell. Um, could see what was going on really from the West Stand and wasn't nice to watch, obviously. Could see the paramedics and the first aiders and the stewards going up to him and, you know, you always hope for the best, but when, you know, you, you look back to last season with Stephen Croft uh, against Burton Albion, um, that it just didn't look great and I were hoping, you know, when I were leaving the ground, so I had to shoot off straight after the game that, you know, that um, helped him to, whatever he was suffering from at the time to come round and unfortunately he didn't so it's a bit gutting really um, shouldn't happen to anybody no matter what team you support you shouldn't have to not come home from watching your football team and thoughts also go out to the fans that were stood round him that were seeing it um, and I hope on Saturday we can get three points for Geoffrey um, so yeah thoughts are out to him it's Pretty sad, really. It puts football in perspective. It's only a sport at the end of the day, and it? it's only 90 minutes kicking a ball or air around. There's more important things in life. And uh, my hope, I'm, I've seen a lot of people have been setting up just giving pages and fundraising pages for his family to help him whatever they, ever, ever they can. I'm sure the club will support him through it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rubbish, really, isn't it? Um, so, yesterday's game, I thought we deserved the point, if I'm being honest. Um, 1-0 up, we played really well um, to get in the lead, uh, you know, really nice to see a score from a set piece. Alma with a really good header from close range. Hopefully that's the start of us being more threatening from set pieces because I felt that that's a weak area that we have had until yesterday. In general, it looked like they'd been working on it, as Luke and James have said in the preview today for Preston. Mowat's corners and free kicks looked a lot more threatening, threatening the Derby defenders more, so hopefully when you're playing away from home, as we will be on Saturday, that's something that you need to be doing well to at least threaten the, the Preston defence. So fingers crossed we can continue with that and be more consistent with it. It was nice to see Mo get an assist. You were my man of the match yesterday for me. I don't know how they gave it to Toby Sibic. I thought it a bit of a stinker to be fair. Um, but it is what it is. But Mo my man, man of the match overall. I thought he had a really good game. He stood out for me, working hard in that midfield, trying to create all the time. Grafting, you, you know, looked like a complete all-round midfield performance. And there'll be some clubs sniffing around him in January. Um, it's just the way that it is, isn't it? You know, he's a good player. And when he plays the way that we know he can, he's a good player for this league. But I felt overall we played better. To go 2-1 down in, into half-time, it were a bit gutting. Um, how quick we conceded both the goals and also in the manner that we conceded them. Um, Anderson for both goals. You know, you can't really defend his defending. I don't know what he's doing for either goal. Um I think it was a combination of he thought that the keeper were going to come to get the first ball and obviously the keepers, you know, it's it's, it's just miscommunication. But it's a simple stuff sometimes, get it into Rose head. Um, I hope they do it on Saturday for if that situation or similar arises again. Um, but it is what it is. They're inexperienced lads. They're, they're low on confidence, I think. They're, they're frightened of making mistakes. And when you're frightened of making mistakes, more mistakes happen. It is what it is. Um and the second goal, again, avoidable, you know, messing about with the ball at the back, not getting rid of it, clearing his lines, we're too deep, letting Derby keep the ball, and then, again, it's it's a penalty. It's a soft penalty, but it is a penalty. You're making the referee, you're giving him a decision to make, and we know how shit they are um, at this level, and it is a penalty, so, you know, there were no complaints for me. I was just really miffed at the way that we went behind. We didn't deserve to, because I felt that Derby created little except for that free. I felt we were the better side, but it is where it is at this level. You know, you don't take your chances, you get punished. Um, Woodrow in the first half at the post. I think Bay had a great opportunity and he didn't get his shot away. Um, Sibic had a good chance as well, so we could have been 2 0 up before they scored their first goal. Um, but the lads battled back in the second half. I don't know what formation we were playing at times, but I think it was more of a case of getting the result. And um, the subs that came on, I felt really had an impact on the game. I thought Malik Wilkes and Callum Styles did really well when they came on. They looked like a threat. Thomas as well were part of the second goal. For me, all them three should start on Saturday, just due to the pure impact that they had. 
we had more purpose, more urgency. We were spreading the ball quicker. I think before we went into a bit of a lull. Derby had a few good chances at 2-1 to make it free. Um, Collins has made a really good save from uh, Waghorn free kick. And they've had some really good opportunities as well and they just haven't put it away. If I'm being honest about Derby, I didn't think they played the best. You could see their confidence was low. Um, I'm not going to comment on the Tom lawrence Mason bennett situation. They shouldn't have played, in my opinion. If it were any two bands of players that had played yesterday, I, I would have um, been really miffed if that were... Barnes are playing two lads that have been drink driving the week before. They should be in prison at the end of the day. do not matter if you're a footballer or not, you shouldn't escape the law. And uh, they'll probably get away with it because they're high profile. Um, footballers notoriously do, or they get away with light sentences. For me, they should have been sacked on the spot. It looks, you know, they're role models at the end of the day. You know, there's young Derby fans that are looking up to them. And they've got to lead by example. You know, they're on enough money to be, you know, why can't they pay for a taxi? Or just up by, book an hotel for the night. There's no need for it. And, you know, they've, in, they've they've left the captain, who was out probably, that could have ended of his career, Richard Keogh. They would have sat in the back, know what to do with it. Um, and he's out for, for over a year, so... Bit shit, really. Obviously, there were some Derby fans singing the names, some Derby fans booing them. In my opinion, it's a bit of a really bad decision by Mel Morris, the Derby owner, and Philip Cockle. Um, it might come to bite them in the arse, but doesn't concern me because I'm a Barnsley fan, that's just my opinion on it. Anyway, going back to the game, into the second half, I thought we played really well. I thought Wilkes offered us something different, reminded me a bit of when Amel used to come on, um, taking a player on, making the defender you know, guess. I think before we were a bit predictable at times. I think we were getting to the edge of the area and just not. I think there were a lot of players, we were playing a bit narrow. We weren't playing and using the, the width as much as we could have done. Um, and I think Wilkes, when he came off, it is that. Um, performances that stood out for me, I thought Ben Williams saying that come back from his first game from suspension had a really good game. Um, for me, he should start on Saturday. Um, I think he's away from home. He need that physicality. And I think if he can keep his tackles to himself, obviously get stuck in, but not like he did against Wigan every every time. I'm scared he's going to get sent off every week. Um I also think that Collins had a decent game, pulled some decent saves off. Uh, Mowat had a decent game. I thought um, Woodrow, he's got the goal at the end. He hasn't had a great game, but he's got the goal, and that's the sign of a decent striker. And we need Woodrow to, you know, to keep chipping in with the goals. We need his confidence to be high because he's, you know, one of our main goal threats. We need Woodrow to be scoring regular to to get up the league. It's as simple as that. Um, I thought Wilkes did well when he came on. And Styles, I, I want Styles to feature more. I think he's a really decent player. He looks really comfortable on the ball. He offers us something different. He's really composed. Um, I think Beira, Sibic, Anderson, they were the three players that stood out for me that were low on confidence. Beira looked like he was going to give a free kick every time he lost the ball. He, I, I, I don't know if he got booked or not, but he must have given him six or seven free kicks away in the first half just for silly pushes when he lost the ball. He looks low on confidence in front of goal. He had an opportunity that really you could tell he didn't have that conviction and confidence. And I feel sorry for him in a way. I've been a big critic of his and rightly so because, you know, it's he keeps making the same mistakes. It's not like he's learning from his lessons. He keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. Um, but maybe that's confidence. Um, I don't know what's going on on the training ground. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a mentality thing. I don't know if it's a psychology thing. I don't know if it's a confidence thing. I don't know what it is. Um, but for me, he shouldn't be the captain, not because I, I, I'm like trying to be a big bully, a bear. I just think he's got enough on his plate already. He's not playing great football. It should be Mowat that's, you know, you know that I think should be the captain. He's got the experience out of most of the players. He's played in the championship longer than of the other players. He knows what it's like, and I think Beira should be left to focus on his on his own game rather than having that extra responsibility because it might be impacting his game. We saw it with McDonald when he got given the captaincy. I know it's a different situation, but I think his game suffered due to being the captain. Some players are meant to be captains and some aren't. Um, but, I, but I'm pleased with the point. We kept by, we kept fighting to the end. It's normally us that concedes goals in the last minute or so. As Steve said after the game, it's about time that we have a bit of luck. Um, and... We could have we could have got more in the second half. Sibic had one cleared off the line. We had a few good opportunities where we just didn't get on the end of. Um, 
And I think it's, it's we, we've, we've got a point at the end. I think it's a deserved point. I don't think Derby deserved the win. I don't think the, they were fantastic. But I also think we were battling as well. We didn't play great, but we stayed in the game. And that's the main thing I've said about other teams in this league. They don't necessarily play great football, but they stay in a the game. They just stay in it. And, and we could have, you know, if that were, if we could have, if we got that goal with 10 minutes to play, we could have arguably gone on and won that match. Um, but hopefully that's a turning point and the lads can take the positives out of that point um, and use it as a as a morale boost and as a as a, as a springboard to push on to Preston. Um, Preston um, done really well in the last 18 months under Alex Neil, obviously former Barnes midfielder back in the day. Some of you fans will have uh, watched Neil. I watched Neil. He were a good combative midf midfielder. Did really well at Norwich. And I thought, oh, he, he might suffer a bit at Preston because he'd a bit of an iffy start. But they've, they've recruited really well. They've recruited really well good young British players they pick the players well to what system they play they don't really change the squad too much they're hard to beat I know they've drew the last two um, drew at Middlesbrough on Tuesday and arguably probably should have beat Middlesbrough due to where Middlesbrough are in the league surprisingly at this, at this point of the season um, but, and they'll be seeing us as an easy three points a chance to get back to winning where has been in the top six they can go into the automatics if results go their way on Saturday so it's a good incentive for them and they've got a good scoring record, and we've got a bad defensive record in terms of conceding. But but we need to we need to go there and play like we did against Nottingham Forest. You know, get get it stuck into them. Don't give them time on the ball. Don't respect them in terms of like don't let them have acres and acres of space. We need the win just as much as they do for different circumstances. And we need to go there and take the game to them. It'd be a massive statement if we can go there and get his first away win of the season. Obviously, if results go our way, we can get out of the bottom three and psychologically that could be a massive boost for us. It could push us on to get some other results. I know it's the final game before the international break. So if we can get a win and take that into the international break and then start the uh, the next set of away games against West Brom and Huddersfield, which are two tough away games, um, you know, with a lot of confidence, with a lot of, with a lot of uh, optimism in a way. Um, but I think Preston are a good side. They've got a good blend of youth and experience. Paul Gallagher always gets goals in this league. Ben Pearson, I don't know if he's uh, injured at the minute, but former Barnes and Loney. Um, they've got some good players in the side. Got some good players in the side. Daniel Johnson. Um, they were they lost Callum Robinson to Sheffield United in the summer. Who we've seen in the Premier League looks like a really good player. Um, but they've replaced him well, and they don't seem to have really suffered for it. They've lost the players, but they don't seem to. They've lost some players, but they don't seem to have suffered for it. I know they got Bauer centre defender in from Charlton. So the they'll they'll be threatening from set pieces as well and we've got to be we've got to be on the ball. And uh, no, like I always say, we've got to go away, do the basics well, um and, and maybe play on the counter. I, I don't know what formation Stender will play. He always surprises me with the formation of the of the lineup. He always uh, sometimes baffles me with the line he sometimes baffles me with the lineup but uh, it's Stendhal's decision and um Let's see where let's see we see who he picks. I think he needs to make a few changes. I think some players need a rest. I think like Sir Anderson, Civic, in my opinion, Bearer need to come out and have a rest. Um if the is fit, I bring him back in or even put Civic to centre back. I don't think Civic's position is centre midfield. He's played a few decent games there, but I think he's starting the cracks are starting to appear. Teams are starting to figure him out. Obviously, they'll obviously see us and know that he's not a natural centre midfielder. And they'll try and exploit that, um, as they, as Brentford did against Jordan Williams on Sunday. Every goal came down the left hand side because he's not a natural left back. So play plays in the proper positions. That's ideally what I want to see. Um, we've got a squad big enough really um, to do that. So let's see that. The team for me would be Collins in goal. In an ideal world, they'd have Cavari at right back. But obviously, there's something going on. I don't know. His attitude stunk on Sunday against Brentford and I like Cavare. I think on his day he's a really good player. I think if he plays like as he did against Wigan a few weeks ago, if, if you guys went to Wigan or if Wigan fans watched this, they all said that he's a really good player. And he is. We know what he can do. But he can't do it every week and he seems to want to turn up some weeks and then some weeks he just doesn't seem bothered. And like I said against Brentford, we can't be having that in this place and position that we're in the league. We need everybody to be chipping in and working towards the same goal. And if we've got players walking about and not having the right attitude on the on the match, and if that's reflecting on the training ground, I don't, I'm not surprised that Stendhal hadn't picked him. Um, it's not the first time that this has happened. I like I love Cavare. I think he's one of the a character that you need in the side. Sometimes a bit of something different, 
bit of a cult, cult figure in a way, but you know, if his attitude's not there, then you know, I, I you know, we we can't be having it. So for me, it'd be Ben Williams at left back. I think he deserves to stay in with the way that he played on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, sorry, last night. For me, Halma stays in, and Diaby comes in if he's fit. I think Anderson needs a rest, or if not, Sibit goes to centre midfield in my opinion. Um, and at right back, I'd have. Uh, I mean, Jordan Williams haven't been playing great. But I mean, I'd have Cavari, but I don't think he'll come in, so he'll probably be after be Williams. I think he's he needs to improve going forward. I think he gets to halfway and then loses a bit of confidence and his passing is, hasn't been great. Like Steve said, he needs an arm around him. If he keeps having off games every week, his confidence is just going to keep dipping and dipping and dipping. He needs an arm around the shoulder. He needs support. Um, possibly put Jacob Brown at right wing back. I don't know. Maybe change it to three five two. I don't know. That is an option. I don't know. Um, in the midfield, I'd have Mowat. Um, on the right, I would have Brown um, or Wilkes. Um, I would have Thomas on the left to come back in. I thought he did okay when he came on. Um, and I would have, do if Dougal's fit, I'd have Dougal either starting and sitting in front of the back four where Sibic played the last game or I'd have him on the bench to come on because um, I think we need Dougal now. Um I think we've we've kind of done as a bit of a makeshift job whilst Dougal's been injured and he's played for the under 23s and I know it's a step up to championship football but if he's available and he's fit and he's match fit get him in get him in get your best players in the best positions it's sooner rather than later we need to be picking up points now we don't want to be, we don't want to be cut adrift we still want to be in 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 the um, we still want to be competing I'd start Woodrow and I'd I'd start Chaplin again I thought Chaplin's really impressed me this season he does a lot of the hard work off the ball. And um, I'd love to see him get another goal. Um, so that'd be my side on on Saturday. Score line up. I mean, we're scoring goals, but we're conceding. I wanna. I'm gonna say two one Barnsley. I'm uh, two one Barnsley, and I'm gonna go Woodrow and Malik Wilkes. I think Wilkes needs to start off as a something different. Um, and that's the that's the uh, score prediction for me. I take a point now. I take a point. A point away from home. Um, and build, you know, a bit of two unbeaten games going into the international window. Obviously, I, I'd love a snatch and grab win and a decent performance. Um, but we don't know what side's going to turn up. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we can get the three points. Uh, come back from Lancashire with the win, and um, hopefully Jeffrey Rose, um, watching us on Saturday, um, and we can get him the win on Saturday, and the lads can get him the win and. You know, I think it'd be really nice for for us to get a three points and do it for Jeff, and also do it for Lewis Fowler as well, who sadly passed away the last few weeks. It's never nice when football fans from your own club pass away um, due to illness or sudden sudden situations. And fingers crossed, the watching over is on Saturday, and um, we can, the lads can get him the win. The lads can get him the win, and let's do it for them. So thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you have a rest, lovely rest of your week. And I'll see you on Saturday at Preston.